Hi everyone, i just got to go over a couple of emails that I've had in and see what I can do here for people. Okay, this one's from Roma. Uh, Hi Dom, I'm a beginner and I like photography, uh, shooting sports, but love studio work. But it, uh, wait, love it, but studio work is interesting for me too. So if you work in a studio, which equipment do you use, settings, how to set up the lights, basic studio photography, thanks a lot. Okay, so in one, two, in four lines, you've asked a question which could possibly take about four days worth of giving. Um, wait a minute, actually, hold on. Let, let's do what I would advise. So I would say go to YouTube, uh, simple one here, go to my channel, as in the Don Bauer Photo channel, type in uh, studio lighting. Let's see if I've got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 12, 50, uh, yeah, oh, and there's more, yeah, it goes on. I've actually already done quite a few things for you there, so instead of me writing you an email which would go on for quite a while, I would say start off by going through some of those videos. They will definitely help if you're wanting, because, like, settings, oh, settings. Tough one there. Uh, and how do you set up the lights? Again, million different ways. Lots of different lighting setups. You've got Rembrandt lighting. You've got port. You've got uh, split lighting. You've oh wait. Well, that one, that one is a good one. Where can I find that there? Portrait lighting techniques. Butterfly lighting. No, no lighting. No shadow. Um, all those different things. Have a look at those ones. They're quite good. Uh, cross flash. All that stuff. Uh, which equipment do you use? A camera, just what I've got, uh, and you can use whatever camera you've got as well. You don't need spe you don't really need specialist equipment if you're shooting in a studio. So I say just look at that stuff and then come back with more specific questions. Okay, here's Paul Kennedy saying, don't know if you know about this already, but there's a site called Portable Apps, portable portableapps.com, uh, and here you can download. Uh, the portable app to your USB stick and take the lot with you with other apps such as GIMP and other movie photography apps with you to any computer that you do work anywhere. Okay, uh, this isn't a question, this is somebody giving me cool advice here, uh, which, uh, hold on, there may also be Adobe Photoshop Touch for iPad 2 and 3. This is not a great tool app to have. Okay, here's more my question for you. Have any of you guys used portable apps? Uh, I shall have to Google this one. I've only just come off with this email, so that's quite interesting. I shall check that out and maybe give a review on that in the future. But uh, portable apps, everyone have a look at that if you've got like a laptop and stuff and you do work there. Interesting. Thank you, Paul. Okay, Nick Broadwell. Hello, just wanted to let you know that I love your blah blah blah. Can you send me an, can you send me an email of all your gear you use? Lenses, bodies, lights, etc. I know it's a lot to ask of you and I am sorry for that. Why? Why do you care what stuff I've got? Also, if you would give me any tips, just general ones, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, my general tip would be don't worry about what other people are taking photos of, or t taking photos with. Generally, the lenses, the bodies, the lights aren't as impressive as the photos that somebody takes. And generally, the lenses, the bodies, the lights only help somebody get the images that they wanted to get either more easily or more affordably or more quickly, but doesn't mean they couldn't get those images with whatever gear that you've probably got as well. However, let's just let's just do the, the old trick here again. Let's go to the, my channel and type in gear. Let's see what comes up with that. Uh, dramatic egg, that was a good one. Buy the best of what you can afford. Uh, yeah, then I've got all my lenses and blah, blah, blah. And my photography equipment. Uh, there you go. That was all, all my photography equipment. That'd be a good one. What's in Don Bauer's bag? I see. Check there. Oh, adverts. Adverts. Go, go away. Go away. <gasps> no, my mouse has died. Mouse. Mouse. No. Oh. Oh, come on, mouse. Come back to me. Okay. Oh, God. Right. Right, cancel that, cancel that, who? Yeah, so I would say just check there. 
Okay, here's one from Carl. Uh, would it have made a massive difference? I like the, the, the intro to this question already. Um, blah de blah, blah. Found uh, found issues with my own work, and although watching various videos of solar phones, thanks to your videos. Cool. I have a question, and if you don't mind uh, taking the time to answer, I'd be very appreciative. I was helping at a wedding. The minister was very mardy. Mardy. Not use that term before. I don't know what mardy means. And didn't put any lights on in the church, and said we weren't allowed to use flash. I would say that's pretty much. Always the case. In the church, no flash. Lighting in the church, crap. Um, the only time I would say you can use potentially you can you potentially can use flash in a church is after the ceremony, everyone's gone, and then you bring the bride and groom back into the church and do the shots then. However, I would just say you're gonna to have to be shooting with prime lenses and f you know, f two point eight or brighter and over three thousand ISO, easy, all the time. Anyway, so you were saying, um, so we have poor ambient lighting only, it'll be or horrible and orange. This is why lots of them are done in black and white. Anyway, I'll go on. I set myself on a tripod, left my D200 on P mode, and hoped for the best. Oh, I would have, personally, I would have chose A mode, after priority. P mode, it, I don't think P mode should ever really be used at churches. It should either be after or manual, really. Um, and hope for the best. Had I had more time to play around, I would play it in manual mode until I found something that worked, but I didn't. Again, weddings, you really, really need to know how to get the best out of your camera before you start doing weddings. If you if you are kind of like worried about, do I change the shutter speed, do I change the aperture, do I change the ISO, which one do I change? You're going to miss so many shots. Anyway, the pictures came out grainy, possibly because you're at high ISO, in poor lighting with a D200. Um, as you would imagine, I don't have any pro lenses, get some if you're going to be doing weddings, but out of curious, curiosity, would it have helped out, would it have helped to any massively degree, what? Oh, oh, right, if you had any pro lenses. I would uh, obviously be better lenses and better quality image, but would I have reduced the grain significantly or just marginally? This is, this is almost more of a mass question. So if you've got, okay, you're saying you don't have any pro lenses. I'm going to say to the point that you probably don't have an f2.8 lens. You're probably shooting at something that starts at f3.5 or f, let's say f4. We'll make it round around f4. If you have an f4 and you're shooting a, uh, and then you get a pro lens, which is an f2.8, that is a one stop's worth of difference. Now that one stop can be the difference between a thirtieth of a second to an sixtieth uh, of a second, which can definitely help if you're shooting with like a 50 millimeter lens. Or it can be the difference between a ISO 3200 down to an ISO 1600. However, then you can get a little bit more pro lenses or go for prime lenses, unless you go from 2.8 to an F2. So that's another stop, a whole stop. So again, if you go from an F4, to a lens which is like an F2. You can get second-hand lenses for dirt cheap and a F2, like a 35mm Nikon second-hand AF slash D lens F2 you can get for like 150 quid. Nikon 50mm F1.8, amazing lens. Uh, there's puzzle lenses you can get which are way faster than F4, F3.5. Um, the only thing is they're most likely to be primes and old, but you're going to get for in weddings, you want the brightness, that's the thing. So if you're going from an F4 to an F2, that's two stops. So instead of a 60th, uh, so instead of a 30th of a second, you're able to go and shoot at all the way over to a 120th of a second. Or if you're ISO 3200, you can shoot all the way back down to ISO 800. So it's a huge difference. So depending on... Like the green that you'll get in your images will be mostly due to your ISO and also how your camera detects light. So you can you have a really high ISO setting, but see if you're shooting outside in bright, bright sunshine, it will look absolutely fine. It'll look a little bit grainy, but it'll look absolutely fine. If you're in really orangey, guffy lights like these that are in here, shooting at high ISO, the green will suck so bad. So... The opportunity here is either you keep it at the same exposure and you just uh, bring the ISO down. So you should go from an F4 down to an F2 uh, and you go from instead of 3200, you're at ISO 800. Or 
you, if that is still an underexposed image, it'd be better to actually overexpose the image. So in the terms of uh, ETTR, exposed to the right, which means exposed to the brighter side. So make the image one stop brighter. Then whenever you're editing that photo later on, the noise is much less apparent afterwards. So, huh, okay, what it means is that you've got much more option uh, if you're shooting with, not necessarily, I'm not even saying it has to be a pro lens, it just needs to be a lens which is a bright lens. So again, going for Samyang stuff, which can get loads of stuff for f1.4, okay, there's no uh, autofocus on those, um, but you can definitely get secondhand, old-fashioned Nikon prime lenses, which are fast as anything and have been used for decades in the camera world. So that's why I would say, I would say yes, it would have helped a lot with the D200. But what I would say is also just test out what works better with your camera, because there may be like a threshold of your ISO and your noise where it gets really good or where it's like really noticeable. So maybe like as long as you've got it below ISO 800, it's fine, so it doesn't matter, but yeah. Just things to play around with there, and I would say yes, it would have made a big difference to the uh, grain. However, also whenever you add in uh, Adobe Lightroom editing to it, I can take away so much grain. So the grain's not an issue, it's more the sharpness that you lose whenever you're trying to get rid of that grain, that is a big issue. Anyway, hope that helps, uh, Carl, and I hope that helps all of you guys. Cheers, bye-bye.